Oh, and somebody's alarm went off. It's time for church. Time. Somebody time. set their alarm. That's so fantastic. <laughs> well, ho, ho, ho. Merry Christmas. How are you guys doing this evening or afternoon? <laughs> right. It's the middle of the day. I use, this is my snack time. Did anybody bring a snack? <laughs> <laughs> well, welcome to Epic. I'm so glad you guys uh, took time out of your schedules with your families and, and uh, friends and decided to join us uh, this afternoon. Uh, let's just stand together this afternoon and... Uh, Let's just start to worship God and be excited about uh, our Savior who was born, right? Amen. We got a little uh, mix of, of Christmas tunes for you this afternoon, so I think you'll like them. Let's start with God rest. God rest ye merry gentlemen, let nothing
Praise God. You can be seated. Who should, who should go first? Me. Hmm. Me, yeah. me, me. How about we go clockwise? Let's go clockwise. What did the angels sing? Jingle bells. <laughs> can you sing it? Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. All of us want to ride them on for jump and play. Hey, Christmas! <laughs> Did you get anything for your mom or your daddy this year, Christmas? Or any Christmas? A fart blaster. Fart blaster. <laughs> oh, I would get my daddy floss. I would get a, I would get a washcloth. Nice. <laughs> So if you could get your dad anything, what would you get him? A new set of hair. A new set of hair. <laughs> Landon, what did the angel tell Mary? Um, don't be afraid. Ooh, good. Why would she be afraid? Because Jesus was born on Christmas. What do you think the pig said at Christmas? Um, cock a doo Yeah. Maybe like Oh, uh, goo goo gaga? <laughs> So picture this. It's Christmas, there's animals everywhere. Do you think it smells good for good old baby Jesus? No. What did the no. first Christmas smell like? This one works. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, that's way better. Um, they're going to be, Kim and I are going to be doing readings while um, Derek lights the candle. When I read, it's from Genesis. And when Kimberly reads, it's the New Testament fulfillment of the prophecy that I've read. And it's in the book of John. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was form a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him nothing was made that has been made. Then God said, let there and there was light, and God saw that the light was good. God separated the light from the darkness. In him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. And together as we continue to worship our Lord. Before actually we begin another song, we I just ask everybody to turn to the person next to you and greet one another on this Christmas Eve. Just by a little, uh, song 
be seated. Please join me for a moment of prayer. Holy God, we come here today to celebrate you. We come to remember what you have done. You have sent Jesus into the world, not to condemn the world, but to bring life, to bring forgiveness, to bring hope. So today we join with the shepherds in rejoicing over the news of your birth. We join with the angels who sang out glory to God in the highest. We thank you, God, that we are able to do this, that we are able to come before you and adore you. No matter where we are, no matter how young or how old, we are able to join together and celebrate your coming to us as a newborn baby. So God, we give you this time, we give you ourselves, and we give you all of our praise. And God, together we join out saying in one voice the prayer that you taught your disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Many centuries before Jesus walked this earth, before he was born, there was a guy named Isaiah who spoke about Jesus, who foretold his coming. And he did so in such an incredibly accurate way for being so long before Jesus actually was born. And it's that same Isaiah who himself said, and a child shall lead them. And so how appropriate is it that we have uh, Ethan Timmerman come forward now. And Ethan, you're like 12, 13 years old, right? 10, 10, yeah, okay, yeah, you just fooled me there. Ethan is 10 years old, and he is going to come right over here to this microphone, Ethan. And he is going to read this word of Isaiah from us from the ninth chapter. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. You have enlarged the nation and increased their joy. They rejoice before you as people rejoice at the harvest, as warriors rejoice when dividing the plunder. For as in the day of Midian's defeat, you have shattered the yoke th that burdens them, the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor. Every warrior's boot used in battle and every garment rolled in blood will be destined for burning, will be fuel for the fire. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom and upholding with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. Let's all stand together as we sing, Go Tell It on the Mountain.
You can be seated. I'd like to invite Natalie Concepcion to come forward at this time as she reads Luke chapter 2, the birth announcement. Hello? Okay, cool. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinus was governor of Syria, and everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up in all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. Thank you, Natalie. We celebrate the gift of what God has given us at Christmas time. And you know, faith is only a response to what God has first done for us. And so we want to give you an opportunity to express, as an act of worship and as an act of faith, uh, an opportunity to give an offering as a, a way of showing the love that we have for what Christ first gave to us.
Well, here's, uh, here's my question for you guys. Have you gotten all of your gifts already? Anybody still lingering? I see some heads nodding. Some, some people need to get some gifts. You're, you're in luck if you're, if you're late because there are opportunities for last-minute gifts. Have you heard about Kohl's? Kohl's, they actually close at 6, I believe it is. But they've been open for 170 hours straight. Is that crazy or what? Yeah, so, so if you need to run out of here, Kohl's will still be open as soon as we're done. Head that direction. But you have a little bit more time if you want to go to Target because I'm told they're open until 10 o'clock tonight. Um, yeah, so, and, and ladies, if you are looking for that special gift for your guy, I have some clues for you. In fact, six different clues. So you may want to write these down. And, and here's the first one. If you feel like getting him something really manly that is always a winner, cordless drill. Cordless drill. It doesn't matter if he has two or three or ten. For some reason, you can't have enough cordless drills. Am I right, guys? You just can't because they're never charged. Uh, in, so you just need lots of them. Here's a second suggestion. You can't go wrong, ladies, by getting anything with ratchet or socket in the name. <laughs> Guys love telling their neighbor, yeah, you should see my new socket set. You want to borrow my ratchet? You can't go wrong with that. But if you're on a budget, if you're on a budget, and you're like, ah, oh, just real, I have like 99 cents to spend. Well, here's what, guys like things for their cars. Just run up to the Jiffy place, the little minute market, and grab one of those little 99 cent air freshener, little, yeah, there you go, stocking stuffer. They're, they're ready for them. Um, and here's one that, you, again, you can't go wrong, remote controls. Remote controls. What guy has ever had too many remote controls in their life? Um, but as I say that, one warning, one thing not to do, especially at this late hour, do not go buy anything that has on the box assembly required. Just don't do it. It'll ruin the day tomorrow. Last suggestion, and two of them actually, you, you can't go wrong with a wheelbarrow or an extension ladder. Note, not a step ladder. That's not very manly. It's got to be an extension ladder. And, and if, you, if you have a hard hat to go with it, all the better, all the better. I'm reminded of a, of a gift that a guy got his wife for Christmas. It was a beautiful diamond ring. He was telling his buddy about it, and his buddy said, Well, I thought I heard her say that she wanted those 44-wheel drive utility vehicles. To which he said, Well, yeah, she did say that, but where was I going to find a fake Jeep? <laughs> Bad one, I know. Gift giving. That's what we're, uh, we're anticipating, right? All the kids in the room are excited about gifts, right? Yeah, or maybe not. I'll take your gifts then. <laughs> Part of what we celebrate tonight and anticipate tomorrow is the God who is the best gift giver. God has a really great history of giving gifts, right? I love this statement. It's, it comes from a guy named Henry Skugel. He was a Scottish minister in the 17th century. He was in the original rock and roll hair band, by the way. Um, and he wrote this little book called The Life of God and the Soul of Man. And in this little book, way back then, listen to what he said. I want to read to you just two sentences, and they're pretty profound for us. He said this, God has long contended with a stubborn world and thrown down many a blessing upon them. And when in all of his other gifts could not prevail, he at last made a gift of himself. Isn't that good? He at last made a gift of himself. But what about all those other blessings that he's thrown down upon us? Let's do a little inventory about that for a minute, just so that we can appreciate it. I mean, think about the very beginning. God created this beautiful world that we know and the universe that surrounds it. It is good and beautiful. Now listen, God did not have to create it. God was not compelled. It did not sort of complete God by making the world. God did it out of love for you and me to enjoy it. And then, of course, 
you and me, people. God created people in his image. That's a very important part of the creation story. That means that you and I don't look like a lizard because we are made in the image of God. Isn't that a good thing? And then God created air and water and trees and animals. Anyone like good water to drink and air to breathe and mangoes and cats and dogs? Thank you, God, at least for the dogs, right? Just kidding, just kidding. God gave us minds to think, minds to think. So we can explore the outer space, we can dissect atoms, and we can build iPhones and Lamborghinis. It's a good thing. It's a good thing. I'll never have one, but it's a good thing. God also gave us hearts to feel. So we have theater, and we have art, and we have poetry, and we have music. God gave us Beethoven and Beyonce. Go figure. What a God giving us all these things. God gave us five senses to delight us. We can see, we can feel, we can hear, we can taste, we can smell, we can touch. Anybody like creme brulee, by the way? Thank you, Lord, for the sense of taste. Creme brulee rocks. God gave us laws so that we don't go nuts on each other like out of a Mad Max film. Anybody ever seen Mad Max? God had us in mind when he gave us laws. God gave us wisdom to discern right from wrong. No other creature in all of creation can discern right from wrong like we can. God blessed us with that gift. God gave us language so we don't go around grunting at one another. God gave us passion and creativity. Uh, I mean, think about it. A chimpanzee, as amazing as those animals are, cannot build the Eiffel Tower or paint the Mona Lisa. But people can. People can. God gave us people to walk with us through this life so that none of us ever has to be alone. But the gift of gifts, the best of all, when all the other gifts, and there's so many more, aren't there? When all of those gifts could not prevail, God gave us the gift of himself. What kind of gift is Jesus? That's what we celebrate. What kind of gift is Jesus? Uh, when we look at what um, Natalie read in the Gospel of Luke, we have some answers that he is good news. We are inundated by news, aren't we? We have news after news after news. Praise God, we have good news, and it's only good news according to Jesus. Uh, he's not only that, he's great joy. Not just joy, but great joy. We live for great joy. We all want great joy for ourselves and for everyone we know and love. And this good news of great joy is not just for some, it's for all people. No one is left out. This makes the good news and the great joy that much better, doesn't it? And what is this all about? It's about a Savior, a Savior, which is really to say He's a rescuer. When we were kidnapped by sin, by falling away from God's will and God's way, He rescued us. He brought us back home. And, and who is the Savior? He's called the Christ. That's a title, by the way. It's not a last name. It's a Messiah. It's the anointed one. It's God in the flesh. It's the, the divine man. And lastly, He's called Lord, which means He has sovereign power over all that is. All of these things are a rich gift, the gift of Christ. Listen, it's so important, isn't it, that we date our time by his birth, don't we? It's so important that his very name is in the name of the holiday that we are celebrating. Jesus is so important that he transcends all time, all cultures, all borders, all languages. Jesus is so important that he could not be shut up when he walked this earth. And he insists on walking into your life through his word, the Bible, through his spirit present with us, and through his body, his people, the church. That's how he is present with us. And so, you're here. What will you do with this gift? 
the gift of Jesus. Let's talk just for a minute about what Mary did. We heard the story. Mary treasured Jesus. She treasured him. That means she placed the highest of value on Jesus. And so, what do you and I treasure the most? Think about that. What is it that rises to the top when we think about what we treasure? Mary also pondered Jesus in her heart. The heart is the the deepest part of who you are emotionally, that which means the most, your purpose. Who do you let in there? Who do you let in there? And then there were the shepherds. That's the other cast of characters. What did they do? They glorified God, which means they put their focus, their attention, their worth, not on themselves, but on God. What or who consumes your focus and your attention? Uh, they, they also praised God. The shepherds praised God and brought Him glory. That's acknowledging God's gifts with gratitude. Are you thankful? What or who receives your deepest gratitude? You see, they knew the value of this gift that was born that night. Remember this. The better the gift, the more important is your response. The better the gift, the more important is your response. Have you ever given someone a gift and it was really important to you and you were anticipating how they were going to receive it and then they just kind of brushed it off? Oh, and it crushed you. I've seen that happen and it's brutal. And so the question for every one of us tonight is how will you respond to the gift of Jesus again? And again, what will you do with the gift of God himself? There was a little boy who got an electric guitar from his uncle for Christmas. Uh, They went to visit him uh, a a, a month or two after Christmas, and he thanked his uncle profusely for this electric guitar. And his uncle said to him, well, you must be getting really good at playing the guitar by now. To which he said, well, no, not at all. I haven't played it yet. And he said, well, why ain't? why not? You've had it for a while. He said, well, see, my mom gives me a dollar for every day that I don't play it. My dad gives me a dollar for every night that I don't play it. (laughs) (laughs) Don't squander the gift that is Jesus. Don't shelve it. Don't ignore it. Jesus wants to be the gift that gives you life to the fullest. That's why he came. That's why he came. The only wise response is also a heartfelt response, my friends. To treasure Jesus and to ponder Jesus just like Mary did in her heart. Uh, To praise and glorify God just like the shepherds did. Unlike that diamond ring that that guy bought his wife, this gift, this gift cannot be replaced. This gift is of infinite value. This gift is worth everything you have and more. Yet this gift comes to you and to me for free. Great cost, but for free. As a baby in a manger who invites you, even now, to make him the Lord of your heart and of your life. Let's pray together. Lord Jesus, we thank you that you are God incarnate, that you chose to come to us in the most vulnerable form as a helpless little child so that we might know the depths to which you would go to identify with us, with our human condition, to live as one of us so that we might know that we are yours. We thank you again for this celebration of your birth. We ask that through your spirit, through your word, and through your people, you might come alive in us again. That we might treasure you as did Mary. And give you all the glory and honor and praise. Just like the shepherds. Thank you for coming to us, Jesus. It's in your holy name that we pray. Amen. It was
was not a silent night There was blood on the ground You could hear So we held her and he prayed. Shafts of moonlight on his face. But the baby in the womb, he was the man. There was this girl named Mary. She loved God and she loved to clean stuff up. But one day, an angel appeared. Mary was so surprised and kind of scared. But the angel said, don't be scared, you're going to have a baby. And then Mary said, how can I have a baby? I'm not married. But the angel said, it's all right. The baby will be God's son, Jesus. Mary was supposed to marry a guy named Joseph. She said to him, look, I'm going to have a baby. Joseph was pretty surprised, too, because he didn't know how to be a dad. But he wanted to take good care of the mom and the baby. Right before the baby was going to be born, Joseph and Mary had to go on a long trip to a town called Bethlehem. But it was okay, because Joseph made sure that Mary didn't have to walk by herself.
but when they got to Bethlehem, it was so full of people. Nobody had roof on them. They tried one place. Are you going to get other kids? At the last place, the guy started to say no. Then he said, wait, I've got a place for you out back. But you got to be okay with animals. There weren't even any beds. But it was nice and warm. We maybe have cheeses. They wrapped them in cloth and put them in the animal's food dish. No one else knew about Jesus yet, but there were some shepherds just outside of town. And some angels showed up. The shepherds were like, oh no, what's happening? But the angel said, don't be scared. I have something really, really awesome to tell you. God's son Jesus has been born. He's in Bethlehem. He's all wrapped up in a blanket. Shepherds were super excited. So they got everyone together and ran to find Jesus. They were really glad when they found the right place. They were like, is this where Jesus is? And Mary let them come in. And they even got to hold and cuddle the baby. Sometime later, some kings were living far away from baby Jesus. But God sent them a special star. The kings followed the special star a long way. A really long way. A really, really long way. The star showed the kings right where Mary and Joseph and baby Jesus were. They even brought a special presents for baby Jesus. Then everybody had a big party. Because they were so glad that God sent baby Jesus. That night was the best night ever. It was the best night ever. It was the best night ever! It was the best night ever. Well, I hope everyone got a glow stick. This is your time to pull them out if you did, and we're going to go ahead and crack them and shake them and the glow. And then uh, we're going to hold these up and sing Silent Night together. So we would go ahead and stand together, and let's sing that out.
such a joy to celebrate Christmas with you, and uh, we want you to know that we do have some refreshments and some child-friendly activities outside under the canopy, so don't rush off too quickly. We hope you'll join us there. If you happen to be a newcomer to us, we'd love to get to know you better, and uh, if you would like to leave us your information with a connect card that's in the back of a chair we'd love to have that you can just place it in the offering box on your way out we're here every sunday morning at 10 45 in this space and we hope that you'll join us then and so now beloved may the lord bless you and keep you and be gracious to you may the light of the lord's countenance shine upon your face and give you peace go now in peace in the name of god the father god the son and god the holy spirit one god now and forever have a very